Father, we just praise you and honor you and worship you and give you all the praise and thanksgiving for you are completely worthy to give praise and honor. And we just welcome your presence of your rock, Ha Kodesh, upon us. As we just meditate and open our ruha up and worship you and honor you and praise you and give you thanksgiving for you are worthy. We ask that the same anointing that's in this room right now, as we're live coming to the people from Dallas, Texas, we pray that they would feel your presence, they would be touched with your presence. They would know you. And they come to know you. And they would know that the Ruach of Yahuwah is an outpouring of his liquid oil from his presence, from his breath. And they would receive your touch of your love and come to know you. If there's anybody watching for the first time, I ask that the veils will come off. All veils will come off them. They would come to know you in a special way, in the true way. For we know that a bride will know the husband, the groom's name. There won't be no stuttering. There will be no uh, skipping. There won't be no guessing. They know without a doubt. We know without a doubt that our vino, Yahuwah, and his Ben, Yahushua, is our Yeshua, our Yahushua, Mashiach, is our Yeshua, our salvation. And we thank you, Father, and praise you. As we touch and agree and stand on the promises of Yahuwah, we agree that everyone that's listening by this stream, all their needs, all their conditions of situations that are coming against them, that you tear down the strongholds as we begin to celebrate Shabbat and have Shalom in the Shabbat. We touch and agree with them and pray for them right now to lift the burdens, to lift the weight of the week as we enter his rest and he invites us to his Shabbat this is his Shabbat and he has invited us to have Shalom with him and to dine with him and we just praise Yahuwah so much hallelujah amen and amen and amen and amen Welcome everybody to Eagles Haven Ministry, Eagles Haven at the Upper Room, Ha Ruha Eliyahu Channel, and EliyahuChannel.com. We welcome you via satellite for EaglesHavenMinistry.com, also at Eliyahu Channel, all the way from Dallas, Texas, Plano, Texas. <laughs> And I just welcome you. We're, we're excited to come into your house and come into your room and to come into your presence or come into your iPad to, to fellowship with you live on stream and to express the, the greatness, the Yofi of Yah, our Yahuwah and his Ben, our Mashiach, Yahushua, who is our Yeshua, our salvation. And... As we come before this day, we're going to continue part two. But before we do, I just want to let you know that we uh, welcome all the Goy, the Goyim, the Mishporka that are, and the Aki that are Ger and Gerim that are coming out and coming in. If you are uh, in the house of Israel, we, we just welcome all of you that are in and coming in and are investigating to come in, are peeking to enter in. To his presence of his Ruach. And some of you are looking and listening and investigating. And we admonish you and exhort you to, to stay, stay tuned and listen to this message. Do not allow yourself in any way to, um, how should I put it, be 
uh, that, that the words or the sounds or the things we're going to say may sound strange to you. But when you became uh, in the Christian community, you didn't know how to say Methuselah, you didn't know how to say Nebuchadnezzar, you didn't, know how to say, you didn't even know nothing about the word Nazareth, which is Nazim, Nazarene, which is Greek, or Nazir, Hebrew. You didn't know nothing about Hallelujah, which is Aramaic Hebrew. You didn't know nothing about Matthew, Matthew or Johann and John, except you might, you might have heard those names in words and didn't even know. You didn't know nothing about Bethlehem. You didn't know nothing about those words that they were Hebrew with a little bit of a Latinized transliteration or translation. But I'm going to offer you a free sample. You can take this. This is a pamphlet. It's colored on the outside. And uh, here is a, um, a closer look up at it. And I'm offering this for, to you for free. You just email me what you see on the screen at Eagleshaven Ministry at Yahoo.com. Eagleshaven Ministry at Yahoo.com. Or if you're at Eagleshaven Ministry uh, .com right now, all you have to do is go to contact and you can put it in the box, your email request, or you can go straight to Eagleshaven Ministry at Yahoo.com. It links the same. So we just welcome you. You're welcome to have that for free. We'll send you some samples of, of Bia, uh, my beautiful Bia's music. So this is my wife and I as we're looking at the panoramic area of Old City. And uh, I just wanted to sh show you the expression of what the Father is doing in our, in our high in, in Israel when we were living there. And we just praise Yahuwah for this opportunity to come into your homes. The, of course, the title of this message is your protective garment, end time protective garments. This is part two. Uh, the bulk of the message I shared last week with you, but I'm going to go ahead and share the, the, the I, I debated to go into the, the vain imaginations or clean imagination, but I'm going to save that to next week. So keep people no, no, noticed on that. And then we're going to go to continue part two and i just want you to have more scripture back up concerning uh the references of scriptures concerning the raiment of fire or the garments of protection we are so conveniently used to uh the mentality of the armor of uh, aloha alohim that we found in ephesians 6 10 through 18 and also in romans and there's a little bit snips in different verses in chapter 2 of ephesians as well in different verses but uh, but, there, but the bulk of the scriptures that's in the Brit Kadasha was actually a quotation that the, 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 the Talmudim, the Zadik, men of Elohim, the Kifa or Shaul were quoting in the scriptures. And they were quoting what they knew already in the Tanakh and the Torah. So uh, we're, we're trying to remove all the thought that of, the, of the Catholic Latin paganized uh, thinking. We have to realize that they only had the Tanakh and the Torah. The Brit Kadasha was added to the, Torah, the Tanakh, or should I say, uh, as a renewing of the marriage vows, okay, of the original marriage vows and the Torah. So... What we're going to do now, we're going to explore more references in the scriptures. We're going to go into the, the Brit Kadasha as well. But we're going to explore more. So w w where are we at? Are We are still in the crossroads of where we need to be. Are we still debating to come out of that, of that what they call Circe, church? They covered over with a Greek word, with a clean Greek word, Iglesia which is the called out synagogues. Are you still involved with that monster, that beast that's, that's breeding and sucking from that pig tit of Roman apostolic Catholic church? Or, or, or do you have the mark of Yahuwah or you have this mark? Are you marked by their ashes of the tamus, which is the blood ritual, the word bless, is blood and blessings is blood dosin. That's the land word. Bless is blood and blessings is blood dosin, which means the blood ritual. 
and they mix it with the ashes of the babies so they will not get their crops destroyed. And this is not a cross. This is not a cruz. This is the T for Tammuz. Are you plugged into that? Or maybe you're plugged into this other system that's flowing out of the pagan Catholicism of the Charismatica movement and the money exchangers that are going around trying to get your credit card and trying to get you to to uh, willfully in the name of the deity spirit fata they call faith and gamble and give these people money for their jets and their Rolls Royces and their planes are you under that covering or are you coming out are you getting that spirit, all those spirits out of you? All those charismaticas, all those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world out of you. That you may walk in the covering of Yahushua. That you may walk in Him and be a part of His covenant of being grafted into the house of Yeshua. I urge you with all the love and the strength within me that you may receive Yahushua, the Hebrew Messiah, and take the blood covenant of the marriage covenant upon you, that you may be grafted in to the house of Israel. They were never supposed to be assimilated into the, into the Circe, the mother Circe of the Roman Apostolic Catholic Church and all her daughter offshoots and all her offsprings of Reformationists all the way through through Canada, United States. Now, you were supposed to be always grafted in to the house of Israel. And we're going to take on his mantle, his coat, and put on the coat of many colors and walk in the fruit of the Ruach HaKadosh and the gifts of the Ruach HaKadosh and be covered with his oil and his anointing and go forth with power and demonstration to deliver them that are lost. We need to break the strongholds off of us of mind-blinding demons of tradition of men. And, and the, you know, we get comfortable with the sound of the frequencies of the words, and we think those are the words. But you are using the, the language of the land of Eng, the English, the language a mixture of Latin, Germanic, French with Latin letters, and they have added these words in the last 500 years to manipulate us, to brainwash us with a replacement theology. Replace the theos, replace the deities, replace the names. Not just to replace a building and a root source, but to replace the very language that the enemy, he can get the esteem, rob the esteem and the honor from Yahuwah. We must clothe ourselves with that armor and put on the raiment of fire and protect us with full armor protection in these end times and go back to the ancient path of Almighty Yahuwah and, and His Ben, Yahushua, and receive the Mashiach, Yahushua, and receive your Yeshua, your, His salvation to you as a free gift. We blow the shofar in Zion and throughout the United States that everyone will come to this knowledge. We're going to go to Telehim chapter 5 and we're going to start in verse, verse 7. It says here, But I, I enter your house in the greatness of your kindness. I bow myself toward your Kodesh, Bayit. Or house, or hagal, in your reverence. O Yahuwah, lead me in your righteousness because of those watching me. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no stability in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O Elohim. Let them fall by their own counsels. Trust them, excuse me, thrust them away for their many transgressions because they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you 
rejoice or simcha. It's a celebration of, of a jubilee type of rejoicing. Let them ever shout for simcha because you shelter them. And let those who love your name exalt in you. We love the Shem of Yahuwah. We love the Shem of Yahushua. We love his Shem. And we know his name and we say and proclaim and declare it for 6,800 plus times. It says to, to, to ascribe it, to proclaim it, to declare it, and say it for the Goy or the nations to hear his name and know it too. But we are not here to hide his name for time is urgent and the time of the end is at hand. For you, Braka, the righteous, O Yahuwah, you surround him with favor as with a shield. I'm going to read this over, verse 12. Very key verse. For you, Braka, the righteous, O Yahuwah, you surround him with your favor as with a shield. Of course, we know we don't use the word faith. That's why we have favor here, unmerited favor. In Christianity, they say the word in the armor, the shield of faith. But we know that faith, Fata or Fahid, is a pagan goddess with a temple, okay? That tosses the dice or spills, spins the spindle in the clouds they call heaven. So, but we are seeking the unmerited favor for Shamaim from Yahuwah through his son, Yahushua. But I just wanted to show you, whenever you see verses, like even in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, or other scriptures, it says about the, the shield of faith. It's really the, the favor as with a shield. They were, meant, they were quoting scriptures, as we see in Telehim, chapter 5, verse 12. They were actually... Quoting this verse, there's several verses like this that says favor as with a shield. And of course, if you read it the other way around in Latin, it would be instead of we read, because they say we read, we read, of course, we read right to left. They read left to right. So they would say shield of faith. We say favor as a shield. So I just wanted to show you that he brakas us with the, the, that garment of righteousness, a righteous one, a zadik, a tamadim. He covers us with that, okay? And as he covers that, and he breathes Ruha Neshima breath inside us to fill us with his Ruha HaKadosh, to anoint and appoint us to go forth in Emunah and power and demonstration for these end times. So he's clothing us with righteousness. And Yahuwah, you surround him with favor as with a shield. Let's go now to Yeshayahu chapter 55, verse, starting from verse 1, continue to read on through to 8. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no silver. Okay, so right away, they're saying they don't have no silver. Now remember, gold is for the sovereigns, they say, or the... The investors, the people in the high level. Gold in the world, they say gold is for kings. Okay, but we don't use that word. Gold is for the mel melekim or the melek or the sovereigns. Silver is for the wel great wealthy on the streets. And then trade of commerce, of trading goats and sheep for other things things of food and trade it's the common people they made paper and they made copper and they made um nickel for lighter coins and quarters and half dollars and stuff like that for the us people that are not making in that higher level but as we read this we come to the revelation here he's telling us everyone who thirsts come to the waters first of all if you're thirsty Come to the living waters. Come to the mikvah. Come to the devilah. Come and get the transformation. It is not the baptismal Latin word, baptismal rite or ritual. It is the devilah, mikvah, and come out rakats clean. And you, and drink, he said to the woman at the well. Out of this well, you're going to thirst. But you drink of me, you shall never thirst. He's the living waters. And you who have no silver, come by and eat. So if you don't have no 
trade of commerce or silver or gold, how are you going to do it? Come and buy wine and milk. Now he's talking about high dollar things without silver and without price. Wow. He's saying that they don't even have a price tag. So at all levels, no matter who you are, at all levels, you could come. It doesn't have a price. According to what you want, you can receive. <laughs> it's like when we go places and minister, I put all our videos and material and literature and I put a basket there. There's no price. I said, uh, if you would like to give, you're welcome to, get, to receive these gifts of videos and, and CDs and DVDs and, and printed material. But if you don't have nothing, you just take as you need. And if you like to give to replace for repent, reprinting or republication or uh, producing more CDs and DVDs, you're welcome. And I found even when I was around the Messianic community, I was getting more, more in my basket without nobody standing behind the table, without us collecting and people were using the cash in the basket to change money and putting what they want in and everything and being honest. Nobody ever ripped me off. And so uh, I found that I received more it, by... CD, DVD, and printed material than if I put a price tag on it. So the Father has a way to make it balanced for people that need to take things without a price. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? Mm, listen. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good or tobe. And let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me here so that your being lives and let me make an everlasting covenant with you. You see, he wants us to have, when Yeshua came, he renewed the marriage covenant vow of Israel. The 10 word marriage ketubah covenant. An everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy kindness of Dawid. So he's telling us to buy something and to drink that are thirsty, number one. Because we're all learning. We came in and just started thirsty. But to buy food and milk and wine, these are uh, uh, costly delicacies. Without silver, gold, a price. So how do we purchase these things? How do we get it in order to to purchase your garments and we're going to continue to read to see see i have given him as a witness to the people a leader and a commander for the people verse 5 see a nation you do not know you shall call shall call on you a nation who does not know you run to you they shall run to him because of yahuwah your alokim Elohim, and the Kodeshim, one of Israel, the Kodesh, one of Israel. For he has ordained you, us, he's adorned Israel, and he's adorned us in him. Seek Yahuwah while he is to be found. And I'm clanking a call out to you that are still in the borderline and using some of the pagan words still. And you're going and visiting the, 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 the daughter, harlot daughters of the Roman Apostolic Catholic Church called the Reformationists. And you're trying to pull people out still, which we understand, but you have to be covered and protected in that environment or you get contaminated in your clothing. Because it's like when you go into a building that has smokers and you're there eating dinner or whatever, or a place that has smoking uh, allowed, when you walk out, you smell it on your clothing still when you're going down the road because you're not a smoker and everybody in the car is not a smoker. So you can go into the environment and get contaminated with the presence of this stuff and you'll find yourself doubting, unbelieving, and mishapping because the enemy is going to try to, to, to put doubt and unbelief. But he says, seek Yahuwah while he is to be found. Seek him. Call on him. How are you going to call on him if you don't know his name? While well, he is near. If you know his name, you call on him. 
Let the wrong forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Yahuwah who has compassion on him and to our Elohim for he pardons much. He forgives us and cleanses us and washes us clean. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Yahuwah. So you can say all you want. He knows, oh, he knows my heart. He knows my heart. The scripture says the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know the ways of man and his heart? And you see, Yahushua knows our heart. He knows that we're still in goo goo gaga stage and stuttering stage, learning how to read like a child, learning how to read and growing and maturing from, a, uh, from, from adult basic education to also a teen to high school, junior high, high school and college. He knows what level we are and where we're moving forward. And if we're moving forward with vigor and hunger and aggressiveness, or if we wobbling and parting our mustache and sticking a bottle in milk and continue to say goo goo gaga, when in reality we should be calling without a doubt in the name and the Shem of Yahuwah and his man Yahushua our Mashiach. For as the Shamaim are higher than the Eretz, the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the Shamaim and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth the bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I sent it for. And for with Simcha you go out and with Shalom you are brought in. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field clap their hands. And there's a beautiful song in, in here about how the trees clap their hands and worship him. We, we, we worship and praise him for this word that's been given to us. To come to him, to be filled with the Ra, to buy without a price and without gold and silver. But how do you purchase? That is the key. And it comes from the, from the righteousness, the, the Zadik as a righteous one, and the Tamadim that have put in themselves on with the garments of righteousness as a person that will be clothed with his protection and garment and hedges. So let's continue and read now to Yeshua Yahu 59.16. And we're going to read 59, 16, all the way through 21. And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no intercessor. So his own arms saved for him and his righteousness upheld him. So there was no one standing in the gap, standing as a mediator in the middle. So his own, so he was astonished by it and there was no one to intercede and stand in the gap in the middle so his own arms saved or yeshua yeshua for him and his righteousness upheld him his righteousness upheld him. and he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of deliverance on his head and he put on a garment of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with zeal as a mantle. Here it says our door, but it's zeal as a mantle. According to their deeds, so he repays. Righteous indignation or wrath to his adversaries. Recompense to his enemies. He repays, recompense to all the coastlands. And they shall revere the name, the Shem of Yahuwah from the West, and his esteem, honor, and splendor from the rising of the sun. When he comes like a distressing stream, which the Ruha of Yahuwah drives on. So when it comes like a flood, like a, like when it comes upon us like a flood, the Ruach Kadosh will drive it away, would overcome it. 
So we need the rock adosh to push back and to allow his stream of his rock to flow upon us and to refresh us and strengthen us in this end time of all the corruption and all the stuff that's around us. It's getting to the point that we have to, wherever we go, to the store, to the market. It's not just walking into some Christian community, Circe building and trying to fish people out or minister to people. I'm very cautious about it. If they have steeples to Baal, they have the three or four degree steps of, of, uh, of uh, a black steeple radar tower to Baal. I usually don't go in those buildings, but if they're a square box building with nothing on the outside and they had no cornerstone, uh, wicked spirit initiation of masons to those buildings, then I'll go in there to minister to people or witness to people or share if the Father gives me permission. But still, as I go out to the car, I'll clean my raiment, I'll clean my clothes that are spotted by the flesh, according to Jude, chapter, uh, or chapter 1, 2, I think is verse 23. We shared it last week. And we clean ourselves, no matter how much you were in it. You will go home and you worked as a mechanic. You go and wash your hands and clean your nails. It, whatever you work in, you have to go home. Uh, uh, when I used to work at a hamburger place, I had, it smelled like hamburgers in my clothes. I had to go wash my clothes and clean myself. I mean, when I was a young boy, you work at a pizza place. You come home smelling, everybody's looking at you like, mmm, pizza. And you come and clothe yourself and wash yourself. So it's like... Wherever you go, you got to constantly clean it spiritually, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. What the enemy would try to put and to put not only to tempt us, but put doubt and unbelief or religious spirits of the charismatic of spirits that is, is really a goddess that puts spells on people. And it says here, verse 20, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and to those turning from transgression in Yaakov, declares Yahuwah. As for me, this is my covenant with them said Yahuwah, my Ruha, verse 21, that is upon you, and my words is Tanakh, Torah, Brikadasha, that I put in your mouth, shall not be withdrawn from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, said Yahuwah, from this time forever and ever. So, we just praise Yahuwah that, that once you come to the knowledge of the truth and the revelation of him, he's going to clothe us as we saw in the first verses of verse, verse uh, the beginning verses we saw in verse 16. He's going to clothe us with that protective garments and hedges and shields and robe us and clothe us in order that we can walk in his protective co covering. And we put on the righteousness, the Zadik anointing, as a breastplate and the helmet of deliverance on his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. Now, this is the one that's not found in other parts of the armor of the brick Kadasha. This is your offensive warfare armor. It's called the garments of vengeance. So it's offensive clothing. Uh, it's like you have defensive armor and then you have offensive armor. And this is, your, of course, your, 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 your sword is a form of, of offensive. Your daggers are forms of def, uh, offensive. Uh, your breastplate that have little spikes on them, or your, should I say, your bucklers on your arms that have the little spikes on them uh, are a form of offensive. While your breastplate and other parts are more defensive based on your right standing with Yahuwah. But he wants us to be even put on the garments of vengeance as a clothing and wrap himself with zeal as a mantle. And I wrap myself with my tallit, I wrap myself with my mantle even when I pray and I intercede and I war on behalf of my family members and loved ones and friends. And I, and I war in prayer and, roar, and I have a roar of a, of a, of a prayer type of warring in warfare on behalf of the ones that can't defend themselves and I intercede and pray for people. So we have to put on this type of raiments and protect the coverings for these end times. Yesha, Yahu 61, I'll start with verse 1. We'll go from 1 to 3 and then we'll skip and then go to 9 through 11. And the Ruah of our master or controller 
Yahuwah is upon me. Because Yahuwah has anointed me to bring tov news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and opening of the prison to those who are bound. Of course, you're going to find this in the book of Lucas, where Yahushua read this scripture. I want to show you something, though, in the King Agnes Version. It says, the Spiritu of the L-O-R-D, and look at the G-O-D. The G-O-D is super capitalized, okay? Different, than, it's, it, it's different, it's not Hebrew number 430 of Elohim, okay? It is superimposed, capitalized in the King Imus with three letters and capital letters. Now, you, I, you know, in Hebrew, we don't have capital or, or small caps. You know, we only have one set of letters. This is called the Codex. So when, usually when L-O-R-D is, it's 3068, but this time it's 3136 because this was translated from the Septuagint, okay, the Greek translation of Hebrew. And it says the name of G-O-D only. So it's, 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 it's kind of morphing you here. Now you got capitalized L-O-R-D, different than over here, okay, than the other L-O-R-Ds that you would find, okay. This is capitalized compared to different. So now realize the does not exist, of the does not exist at all. Okay? Is is telling you don't exist. Them that are bound do not exist because there are italics and higher, lighter letters. Okay? They're not original Greek or in the original Hebrew too. So in Hebrew, it's ruha. So it doesn't say the spiritu, which is only a human spirit. A human being can have a spirit. A demon can have a, is a, got a spirit. Fallen angels got a spirit. And sickness and disease have a spirit of infirmity. Okay, so. It is really the ruach. The breath. The ruach. The ruach. And here it says, of the L-O-R-D. But it does Remember, of the does not exist. It's just word. word all right. Our controller. All right. Adon, Adonai, but we use the word, we don't like to use Adon, a part of that ancient deity. We like to use a, 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 our controller. Our master, master in, in, is only from the year 12 and 1300. is a very young word. It's not very old. And uh, from, uh, from Great Britain and Anglo-Saxon. And it's not a really a bad word. Some people think it is, but, and it's not even connected to Adonai. It's actually master just means a controller, operator of your, of your life and death, of your high or your living condition at the time, or somebody that's your boss, okay? So, and then they put the G-O-D and it's capitalized 306, with 3069 instead of 3068, but you notice they're both the same, okay? And here, it's got the root of 3068 and 136. And here, it's got the root just 1661 with 3050 with this Yah and then 3060. It's a little bit of yah, Yahuwah, okay, because the, there's no V. The, the Va is Catholic Latin from 12 and 1300. So it's Yahu, Yahuwah, okay. And here again, Yahuwah, all right. So... It reads completely different, but they stumbled on it by putting capital letters. And they're putting all these add-ons. So, in the ISR, they put the filler words, and I don't know why they did. I just they want people to get used to that are comfortable with King Imus. But it's the Ruah, Master, Controller, Yahuwah, is upon me. Simple. The Ruach of our Controller, or Controller, Yahuwah. The Ruach, our Master, Yahuwah. These words, the and of the, does not exist. That's why when they say the Ruach of Eliyahu, Ha, Ruach, Eliyahu, the spirit of Elijah, there's no the. the there is a Hebrew word for the, and it's the ha. But you don't see it here when we did the translation, when we did the word study. Because Yahuwah has anointed me to bring good news, or good, or tov tidings, or glad tidings. Okay? 
So it, 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 this is the a little cleaner word, but tov tidings is better, or good or, or glad tidings is even more original in the King Imus. They added the word good later on. It used to be goody. You see, the word goody in Old English, good, originally had an E behind it, and it was pronounced goody, like goody, 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 I like that ice cream or whatever. But when they put the word good without an E, it, with morphology, morphology, what it does, it connects it to the deity G-O-D. It connecting it to good, 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 and, and which is a pagan deity. All right, and I'm only expressing it to let you know. So it's goody in, in original King James, not this word. And, uh, but or they say the word uh, gashbel. We want to leave that word out because that's the spell of the deity good that demands innocent blood of babies in order to prosper with my fame, fortune, and money. That's why it's on a dollar bill. And to meet, anoint me to bring bazora. In Hebrew, it would be bazora. Bazaar is short for, of the word besorah, because he's separated, this is just tidings. 13, 19 in Hebrew, bazaar, bazorah, okay, is the full when you put the two words together, okay? He, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and the opening of the prison door to those who are bound. So this is spiritual freedom, casting those devils out like those pictures I sent, showed you earlier. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, our Elo, Aloha, to comfort all who mourn. To appoint unto those who mourn in Zion to give them embellishment for ashes the oil of Simcha for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of human spirit of heaviness, and they shall be called trees of righteousness, a planting of Yahuwah to be adorned and admired. So he's telling us to put on the garments of a human spirit of He's putting on the garments of praise in our human spirit to take away the heaviness. To take away the spirit of heaviness, he's telling him to put the garment of praise. Because there's a spirit of infirmity, there's a spirit of tumors and cancer and diseases, there's, there's unclean spirits, and there's a spirit of heaviness. And it makes our ruha, our spirit, spirit man or woman, have heaviness. We cast it out. And we put on the garments of praise, and they should be called trees of righteousness, a planting of Yahuwah to be adorned. Let's go to verse 9. So we're putting on different garments. We've seen the garments of vengeance, and he repeats it again. Take revenge against iniquity and evil. And then he was talking about the garments of praise to remove the spirit of heaviness. Verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the, the nations. Not Gentilis. This is a pagan Greek word. This word in Hebrew is goy. Or you can say goyim for many of them. When you put an S, it's goyim, many of them. But Gentile is a Catholic word. It's gentilis. It's fem female parts of female organ of a woman. Okay, it's female parts. Okay. It is wicked. It's not, you shouldn't even use those words. It is the word ethnos. If we were looking at it in the Brikadasha, it would be ethnos, mean nations of races other than the race of the house of Israel. But in Hebrew, we use the word goy or goyim. Okay, goy for one, goyim for many. And uh, we don't use that word. And it says here, And their offspring in the midst of the people, all who see them shall not acknowledge them, that they are the seed of Yahuwah, has Barut. 
and their seed shall be known among the nations, or the goyim, and their offspring in the midst of the people. And all who see them shall know them that they are the seed of Yahuwah, are the seed Yahuwah has barut, and poured his berakah and berakot upon you. You see, they're not going to know the difference if we dress and look and, and act and talk the same like the rest of the world. We wear our hair the same like the rest of the world. We look the same like the rest of the world. We're going to wear our wool in linen and even uh, clean cotton. And we're going to wear our clothing a little different, more kodeshim, more, more in, the, in the simplicity of being kodesh. Or Kadosh set apart. So he wants us to be robed different. And above all our robe in the spirit realm. When you, which you put on in the spirit realm reacts in the physical. When people look very gothic and very dark. And very in their hair and their nails and their earrings and piercings. And piercings are not bad when it's, it's done in moderation and beauty. Because in Israel the ancient times they did they had no nose uh, uh, jams and different jams in different areas in their ear and their nose but there's it's it's an extreme now of piercing on their lips and it's multiple outrageous uh, of piercing going on and and all the posting of the ears and as well as all the dark fingernail polish and clothing and colors and everything what is inside their spirit is manifesting in the outside of what's inside them. The demon spirits that they have been in unclean environment have become familiarized to them. And in that familiarization of familiar spirits of attaching them, it gravitates their mind to covet what their friends and associates and the places they party at and go to. To put on the same acquaintance of familiarity. So when they go through the door, they look alike, smell alike, and, and dress alike, and, and they're familiar. It's a familiar spirit, one to another. But what's inside is manifesting on the outside. So with us, we have the inside of the Ruach HaKadosh and the manifestation of His Ruach of Hashem Yahuwah and Yahushua as our Mashiach. And the outward manifestation can't help itself and we get the can't help us and we, can, we speak His name without stutter and we utter His name with power and authority under the anointed unction of the Ruach HaKadosh and we are operating of what's inside us manifesting outward and all can see and hear even when I had people do things and said things to me aggressive people on the street or in a store and they, they, they aggressively lunge and cuss at me with four letter words and I say I rebuke bind that aggressive spirit in Yahushua Shem and their head does a double take. They don't know the language. They're sinners. They're possessed. But the spirit inside them, the demon spirit, that's manifesting a blasphemous spirit against me because the demon spirit is using that vessel to come against you and voice and word curse or butt in line or disrespect you or honk the horn and flip you off in the street in the, while you're driving or whatever it is. Is That spirit in that person is outwardly manifesting towards you and you just have to rebuke it not the, the soulish realm of that shell that it's dwelling in but the spirit demon that can hear through that that uh, that speakerphone called an ear and go in there and they're arrested in the Shem of Yeshua and I had them stop in their tracks literally because I'm not talking to that person I'm talking about the inner spirit that's manifesting outwardly I greatly rejoice in Yahuwah. My being exalts in my Aloha Elohim. For he has put garments of deliverance on me. Now is the garments of deliverance. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. The robe of being a Zadik. A righteous one of the Tamadim. The Akib Mishporka of Yahuwah. The robe of righteousness as a bride. Groom decks himself a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels 
So we are clothing ourselves completely. I had a I was preaching at a particular crossover congregation that's coming out. And some of their people are still coming out. And they were getting visitors. They haven't been around for a few months. You ever get that once in a while? And I pop in and I'm a guest speaker for a couple of week or a few days. And, and you get some somebody comes in with a total mindset of Christian community. I'm trying to teach these people Torah, Torah and the Tanakh and the understanding of the taking the veils off their eyes to understand Barak Kadasha and the Hebrew mindset. And a man in the front row stood up and rebuked me in the J man. In the JC words, he rebuked me and said he binds me in that name and all that. And once the microsecond of his breath came up, I'd wave my finger at him because he was almost five feet away from me. And his head was hot with anger saying, you can't say that. I, I, how dare you? You are blaspheming and all that. And he's rebuking me in the J man and telling me the spirit of me to come out. And I said, I bind you, I arrest you, you charismatic spirit of Christianity. I bind you in the name and the shem of Yahushua HaMashiach. And I bind you and command you to sit down. And his body went to the chair because he was in the front row. He couldn't get up and his head went down. I continued to minister and teach Torah and his Ten word marriage covenant of being grafted into the house of Israel. And uh, within 30 minutes he pulled his notebook out and started making notes. At the end of the service he came to me. For, he came up. And he was going to hit me. He had his hands cocked when I rebuked him and bound him and commanded him to sit down. And he was going to swing. And he, when he was rebuking me in the J-Man, he was going to fire me up, right? But the shields of Emona came up and, and he couldn't even pop a swing, okay? Now, what happened was he tells me this. When I did with all my heart and mind and bound, I thought, a spirit in you and rebuked those words you're using in the J-Man name. And you bound me in Yahushua's name my mouth glued to my, my my tongue and mouth stopped. My body went to the chair. And I heard a voice say with me, he is my man. He is, he's going to teach you my true name of the Father and the Son. And what he's teaching you is truly Hebrew truth. Sit, don't run out, and listen to my servant. And that's the reason he stayed. He fought it for 30 minutes. And then he took his notes out. And he said, when I rebuked them in Yahushua Shem, that literally he felt a spirit leave his body. So he asks me, what left me? That's called the charismatica spirit. Charismatica is not in the scriptures. It's morphed in some of the Greek words. Underneath, hidden under the English language of your King James. But that is a goddess that gives false gifts and false spirits to keep people in the Circe. The Agora round Circe temples of Greek temples of different goddesses. Of goddess grace, the goddess mercy, the, go, go, uh, the goddess of Fata, faith. All these goddesses of pagan deities. And Charitias is a god. So the, the charismatica gives you gifts to lock you in to hear those words. So when he felt it leave, he said, what is going on? Here's somebody that's speaking in the name with authority. Like I thought I spoke with authority. And that man became the best pupil I've ever had. And he went back to his country teaching the true name. He said, if I used to cast out spirits in the J-man name. How much more now with the, the prince of all authority, Yahushua, and that anointing of his Ruach HaKadosh, I will go back with that authority and set people free. So I'm explaining this to you. These are experiences I had. I'm not just, I'm not just talking and telling you theoretical emona. These are experiences I've had in action, ministering in different places. For he has put garments of deliverance upon me 
So we're going to get, we have the garments of deliverance to deliver the people that are held in bondage in prison houses. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. So you got a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorned herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the seed to shoot up, so our, or, so the, let's look what it looks like in, 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 as we uh, approach it in the Greek. He says, it springs forth all nations to spring forth so Yahuwah Elohim will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the Goyim, all the Goyim, all the nations of the world. They would see the difference of us because we have put on, we have put on, we have put on a different mantle. People can see it. I can see Yehudi, I can see Israelites, I can see people in different places where I go. I, the Father told me one day to go into a messianic congregation, a very messy messianic congregation that teaches Talmud oral. And when I was in there, the Father showed me two people. He told me to go. It was only two times I went and that was the only reason. Two people there and he, he pointed them out and he said, these people are a house of Israel Go talk to them after. They're just lonely, seeking a place to fellowship, and they don't know where to go, and they're just scouting out, and they don't really want to be here. And I could tell by the person's reaction, he didn't care with the words they were using in the music and the songs. They didn't care about the mixture. And when I approached him afterward, he, he, he had greeted me, Shalom Alinkum, right away, hockey, and, and, and all that. He, he, was, he was so amazed that somebody was there too. And I told him, I came here for you, and I gave him material. But anyway, so let's go now to, as we understand, there's a garment of praise. There's a garment of salvation. There's robes uh, to break the strongholds of the enemy. And he decks us out supernaturally, spiritually with his righteousness, right? With praise, the right, causes righteousness and praise to shoot up before all the nations. So how can the people see this if we look like the rest of the world? We have to, we have to transform. We have to come out. Of those things, all right? We have to be a, 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 a Tamadim Zadik, a righteous one, all right? So we can, we can walk with, with his, our Avinu Melekenu, our father, our sovereign. That we can walk in his righteousness, El Roi, the, uh, the Almighty that sees all things, because he sees all things, he sees our heart, he knows all things. He still, he knows that we're, we're dipping and playing around and compromising or sliding back, and we need to move forward. Now let's look at descriptions of, of Yahushua in Matthew Yahu chapter 17. Matthew Yahu chapter 17 verse 2. And he was transformed before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as lightning. As light, excuse me. So now, this is what they call the Mount of Transfiguration, but it's of transformation. This word transformation in the Greek is actually a, it's, it's actually a cool word, man. It's amazing. Uh, of uh, transfiguration, or metorpho, like morph, morpho. Like you're morphing, a morphine, and it's a transform or a metaphor, fellas, morphine, a transformation, a transfiguration. There's another word I saw in Greek too. I don't have it on up top of my head, but it's also to be in one place and be and reappear in another place, like a tr teleportation or transformation. But this is more of a metamorphos. In the Greek, or uh, transformation, he's transforming. So, what's happening to him? What is the mantle and the remnant, or the garments that's in the inside of his ruha man, is starting the manifestation on the outside, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his remnant, his garments. All right, apel, apparel, 
cloak, clothes, garment, raiment, robe, vesture was white as light, the light. Oh, verse 3, and see Moshe and Eliyahu appeared to them, talking with him. And verse 4, and Kepha answered and said to Yahushua, my controller, master, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three booths or tabernacles, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. So now, how did they know what they saw standing beside them was Eliyahu? How did they know it was Moshe? Man, they're all, all the Jews look alike. You know, we all got big noses and rough features and wild looking hair and curls and wild looking. And how did they know it was Moshe and Eliyahu? Now, we know in Mark 9, 4, which we're going to go to it, but, and he says booths. Booths is like the word tabernacle or his sukkah or sukkut. Let's make sukkah. Let's make sukkut. Let's make booths. So it's the, during the feast of sukkut that this event took place. Let's make a booth here. Let's do a booth here for them too. Okay, so, and he's talking about Moshe and Eliyahu there. And for some reason, their Ruha bear witness. They knew it was Moshe and Eliyahu. Now, what took place in this transfiguration or morphing or transformation or transportation or teleportation going on? While Yahushua was standing on that hill, it was the same place where he stood and talked to Eliyahu. Now, it's not the message here. I'm just throwing you a little, little extra uh, here. It's a different message showing you all the references of the scripture of Moshe and Eliyahu. Because when Moshe said, show me your parts, he looked at his back parts, which means he looked at Yahushua in the future. Okay? Eliyahu saw Yahushua in the future. Because when somebody's standing in front of you, five, six, seven, eight, ten feet ahead or whatever, they are actually in the future. So he saw him in, in the future. So Mo, they saw Moshe and Eliyahu in their three dimensions of the past. So Yahushua in his dimension in time was speaking to both Moshe and Eliyahu in both their dimension of time. They were actually standing exactly in the same location, okay, but in a different time zone. Or a different set of time and rules. Okay. So that's just to let you know. So he is, And in his white raiment and his apparel, what was in his spirit man, it manifested in the outward man. Okay. At that moment. Because it was a sequence that should have been done to be in three dimensions at the same time. Of three ports of time. To, 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 that Moshe could build up his emunah to see the future. And Eliyahu could build up his emunah. When he was trying to, you know, he was in the cave and wondering, you know, and the, the father manifested in the, in the, they showed the fire, showed the wind, showed the storm. Then the sweet, small voice, and it was in the voice that, that he heard the Ruha. So those are the experiences that took place. You go research it, but that's a revelation of it, a little extra nugget. In Mark 9, verse um, 1 again, and he said to them, Truly I say to you that there are some standing here who shall not taste of death at all until they see the reign of Aloha, Elohim, having come in power. After and after six days, Yahushua took Kepha and Yaakov and Yohanan and led them up on a high mountain along, alone by themselves and he was transformed before them. And this is one of the mountains of, of the seven hills of Zion. Okay? And his garments became glittering, exceedingly white, like snow, such as a launderer on earth is unable to whiten. And there appeared to them Eliyahu and Moshe. And they were talking with Yahushua. And here's all the footnotes, all the way even to Malachi, all the different footnotes. And let's look at another one, chapter 9, uh, Lucas. And it came to be, as he prayed, the appearance of his face changed and his garment dazzling white. And see, two men were talking with him who were Moshe and Eliyahu. So there's two, three witnesses. They confirmed these. There was, first of all, three men were present. That's three witnesses, two or three witnesses. Then it's in three of the Bezoras, the three of the, the, the glad tidings, the good news. A three confirmation, three confirmation that they were Moshe and Eliyahu. And they knew it in the Ruah who they were. But also it could be later they asked Yahushua, 
who were these men? And they probably, he probably told them that was Moshe and Eliyahu and that transfiguration, which you saw. Don't tell nobody till I leave. Okay. So what was the garments that were, they were, he was walking in was seen in that moment manifesting from inward outward. So when we go places, people, and we show our Ruha of Yahuwah, they see the open Shamaim manifestation. They see this now. We're going to go now to Revelations, Hazon chapter 16, 15. You know, with my gift of discernment, I've been in places when I was in the, in the movie industry. I'm not going to get into the depths of it. But there was people that would come in with beards, very masculine, tattooed down, dudes, the dude dude, you know, a, a man's man. But in the Ruah, the father told me he was gay. He told me the guy was homosexual. And he's a flaming, but he's undercover. Then I seen men, or seen women the same way. They dress very sexy, very woman, very feminine. Excuse me, not sexy, but feminine. But they were flaming uh, lesbians. Now, in their spirit, their spirit bears witness with their spirit that they are in that gay community. If they're male or female, it doesn't matter. No matter which they're pitching or catching in that ball game. Okay? As when we discern in the Ruha people, I've seen them even dress the part that you can't even tell. They're so undercover because of their profession. They don't want nobody to know. But I can discern it. But also, a flaming one can discern one that's dressed normal. Looks normal. Clothes normal. Where's their hair and beard or mustache normal? But the witness in their spirit man bears witness with that other spirit man that they're cha-chas. Okay? They're he she's Or they're flaming whatever in the gay community. The same way in criminals. Criminals can tell another criminal. The same way a heroin addict can tell an heroin addict. A meth addict can tell a meth addict, a, a guy that smokes weed can tell another one that smokes weed, not only smells it on them, but even if they bathe and wash and clean up and look so square, clean shave, short hair and all dressed in a suit, they can know that they are involved in that particular appetite, uncontrollable urge of smoking pot, okay, because marijuana is a weed and it's a weed flower plant. And, that, and the weed flower pad was, weeds were cursed on the earth. It's not an herb. It's not in the family of the herb. It's the family of a weed. And it was a curse on the land. And it has, happens to have the pods of opium. All right. So the, and it's an uncontrollable vegetable. Vegetable, or vegetables are addiction. They have addiction, addiction bondage through vegetable family. Okay. Things that have vegetable chemistry formulas in it, like alcohol or cocaine and other things, that gives, a, that gives a, an appetite, uncontrolled urge of addiction. Okay. In the vegetable family, smoking does the same way as tobacco. Okay. Uh, so, without getting in, in any judgment about it, because some people like to, like to still do it, I don't need it because I have the Ruach Kadosh and I'm flowing in the Ruach Kadosh anointing and I don't need it and I haven't touched nothing. I haven't touched even a regular cigarette or any cigar or any pipe or anything from my past since the 70s. Okay? So all that had been done away with since the 70s. Now, the unclean spirit of that addiction quickens other people with unclean spirits. The spirit of them bears witness with their spirit that they have the same spirit. Even if they don't dress the part and their outer garment, it shows different. Okay? The same thing with us when we walk in a room, in a, a store, a market, wherever we go. The Ruach HaKadosh in us bears witness with us that somebody has the Ruach HaKadosh as well. That are walking in the Torah and the Tanakh under the marriage covenant of the house of Israel. Or they can bear witness that if they were a part of oral, Talmud, traditions of men, or the traditions of Torah. Written by Moshe. So in the same way, but us that have the gift of discernment, which is 
which we call Shama Ba'in Nefesh. We, we do Shama Ba'in discern the Nefesh, the spirit of a human being. If it has a Gava, a ghost, or if it has a spirit, a Dabuk, or if, it, or if the atmosphere is Rada Dabuk, or is a demon, a Sadim. But we have Shama Ba'in. Okay? And so in Hebrew, they have more category words. They don't just say one word and put it in a nutshell and point it out. They know exactly by that word if it's a ghost, if it's a polygress in a building, or if it's a person, or it's on a person, or in the building, manifesting through the period. In the Hebrew, we have specific words. Okay, but someday I'll do a teaching on that. And so we have the Shama Ba'in, the sermon of Tov or bad. People are they got good ruas or nefesh or bad nefesh, or they're having hitchhiking spirits on them, clinching to them like spiders or 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 uh, monkeys. I've seen them like a monkey on people's back. I've seen them as a spider on people's back. I've seen them like falling around, like floating above them. Okay, and 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 so and I don't even just go around casting it out unless the Father tells me to. To, to minister deliverance according to the scriptures, to preach deliverance to the captive if he's willing to, because I don't want them to get seven times worse. And so, but I will minister to people at times as the Father leads that are straight up strangers as he leads me. Now, as we look at this scripture in chapter 16, verse 15, he says, See, I am coming as a thief. Baruch is he who is staying awake and guarding his gar What? You got to guard garments now? Not just guard your conscience, your imagination of your soulish man, your mind, will, emotion. But your garments, your spiritual zadik, your tamadim zadik, least he walk naked. And they see his shame. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew, Har Megiddo. Now, guarding his garments, least he walk not naked, and they see his shame. Why do we got to walk in spiritual clothing, guarding our garments and staying awake? Because he's coming like a thief. Because of what is coming, Ha Megiddo. Armageddon that's coming to the earth, the destruction. So we have to be guarding our garments and keeping our garments clean in white raiment of fire. I call it white garments as we saw in the part one of this end time protected garment message. Let's go to the last passage of verse. In verse one of chapter nine of Hazon, it says, After this I heard a loud voice of a great crowd in Shamaim saying, Hallelujah, deliverance. And uh, honor, esteem, and splendor, and respect, and power to who? Yahuwah, our Aloha, Elohim. It goes only to him. No other name under Shamayim to be saved. I know they put a nail, fake name. I know they put a, a counterfeit name. And you of the Reformation Baptists are following the Reformation movie that are da harlot daughters of the Roman Apostolic Catholic Church. Of those offshoot fake names that are only five or 600 years old, some are 800, but they're all fake words added in there to get you to give honor and esteem and praise to G-O-D on the dollar bill, the mighty one of fortune that demands innocent blood of abortion babies and even eat the flesh and drink the blood, which is going on now. Or to call on the fake Messiah, to use a JC word, to use the J man as the Messiah, the, the Catholic first Pope, Constantine, declaring this is the way it is, and so many bishops running and fleeing from their lives from Constantine as he rewrote into a more other Septuagint Greek manuscript, different than the original Hellenic. So, as you, his name is above every name, are you going to call on the name that's above every name in the original, or are you going to call nicknames? If I turned around and told my wife, good morning, Suzy Q, I love you, I would get a slap in my face if I called her another name. I know better. Google Gaga only lasts so long. 
But when you start parting a mustache to put a bottle of milk in your mouth, it looks real funny to the Father. Okay? Because true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great whore who corrupt the earth with whoring. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And a second time they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rises up forever and ever. And I pray this all the time. How long, Father? How long are you going to let the innocent blood from the earth cry out? Oh, Father, let's bring, let's bring the hammer down of visitation. And verse 4. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped Elohim. And sat around the throne saying, Amin, Hallelujah. Okay. Yah be praised. Verse 5. And a voice came from the throne. Huh? Praise our Aloha or Elohim. All you his servants and those who revere him. Both small and great. And I heard as the voice of a great crowd. As the sound of many waters. And as the sound of mighty thunder. Saying hallelujah. For Yahuwah. El Shaddai reigns. The mighty Shaddai reigns. The mighty Shaddai reigns. Hallelujah. El Shaddai. El, El Roy. The mighty one of Yesharel. Uh, Yahuwah. Roy. The mighty shepherd. Yahuwah Nishi. Yahuwah our banner. Yahuwah Yara. Well be our provider. Yahuwah Rafa. Our healer. Ha Makom. The omnipresent one. He is our El Shaddai. He is the mighty one of Israel. He is our covering. He is the one. He says, with a great voice and a great crowd and the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahuwah El Shaddai reigns. They're not going to use English words. This is Hebrew. When we do this, let us be glad and rejoice and give him praise. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife prepared for, prepared herself. And to her it was given to be dressed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the Kodeshim, or Kadosh. Kadoshim is the righteousness, the Zadik of the Kadoshim. They're going to have white raiment upon them, clean and bright. But today, as it says, as we saw in Telehim, as we saw in Yeshayahu, without money, without silver, without a price, you can purchase it now. You start the preparation now of being Zadik Tamedim. Okay. And some of the feasts we wear all white. Some of the, 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 our Israel, black Israel brothers, they like to wear all white in the feast. And that's very lovely. In Israel, they do that too. The, the Ethiopians and the Nubian Hebrew Israelites, they wear all white. And then some of the, some of the uh, Sephardics do that too at a certain time of the feast. Let's keep reading. In and to her it was given to dress in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen, for the righteousness of the of the set apart ones. And he said to them, Right, Baruch are those who have been called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of Elohim. Not Bladosin, the blood rite ritual with the deity on the dollar bill. It's Baruch. Is he? Look at my video on YouTube on that. And, we, and it fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See, I do not... See, do not do it. I am your fellow servant and of your brothers who possess the witness of Yahushua. Worship Elohim for the witness of, of Yahushua is the Ruha of Hanavi or Hanaba. So the witness of Yahushua is the Ruha or a spirit of or Ruha of Nabuah. Nebua, Nebua, a Naba of the Hanavi. Speaking forth that Yahushua is the Mashiach, he is the Yeshua, the salvation, but his name is Yahushua. 
And we call that forth. For I saw Shamaim open, and there was a white horse, and he who sat on him was called trustworthy and true, and in righteousness he judges and fights. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, having a name that had been written, which no one perceived except himself. And having been dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of Yahuwah. Okay. Yahuqanan chapter 1, verse 1 through 14. And 14. I thank you for tuning in. And I thank you for tuning in and, and watching this. This is the second part, two of anti-protective garments. Don't forget, you can write me and get this free copy of Correcting the Replacement Theology Words of the Traditions of Men of, uh, and Correcting All the Catholic Words and Reformation Words and Putting Clean Words so that you can start using clean words. I can, read, I can take a, a scripture from anybody's hand and turn around and read this directly with people. Okay. In other words, once I memorize all the unclean words, I me and then I know the, how to correct the words in an art of infallibility, but a good art of effability, I correct it in a clean way to show people the truth. So are we going to now protect ourselves? Are we going to cover ourselves from the fiery darts all around us? Are we going to put on the white raiment of fire, the garments? Are we going to put on the garments of praise and the garments of uh, an anointed oil of his Ruach HaKadosh? Are we going to praise him and destroy the spirit of heaviness with a garment of praise and worship? Are we going to be grafted in to the house of Israel? 